upon their return to China, Jack wrote Sun an email turning down the 40 million investment. Instead, he offered to take in 20 million for 30%, adding, if you agree, we will go ahead. If not, that's it. Whoa. <laughs> Now, after Goldman Sachs investment, what happens to Alibaba? Let's break down a couple of terms that we see common in startups. The first thing he does in page 116, well, perhaps not the first, the first thing he did was to pop champagne maybe, is to relocate the headquarters from Hangzhou to Hong Kong. Now, in startup legal terms, we call this flipping where we move the shareholding structure from one jurisdiction to another jurisdiction. Now, entrepreneurs like to ask me to do that, thinking that it's very easy, but it's actually requiring a lot of work. So from that perspective, what startup founders can think about from day one is ensuring that the holding company of the startup is incorporated in the right jurisdiction. The next paragraph is my favorite paragraph. Alibaba wasn't generating any revenue and urgently needed to raise capital, like most startups. Of course, there was at that time no capital available in China. It was all American. Looking at how Sina, Sohu, and NetEase, which were big Chinese startups then, had done it, Joe registered an offshore company writing out a personal check for $20,000 to a law firm, Fenwick and West, to ready Alibaba's corporate structure to receive venture capital investment. All they needed now was to find investors and he set out with Jack for San Francisco. So what Joe did is great for Jack. He made sure the company is incorporated, ready for investors. When investors ask for due diligence or materials, these will be produced quite easily. For most startups, what we see is A, investors will ask for light touch due diligence because most startups are quite young. So they ask for a constitution, business profile, register of members, quite basic documents. B, if you are able to have very good bookkeeping skills, making sure that everything is documented, everything is clean on records, it does make the investor's job easier and it does make your pitch a bit more smooth. The next thing that Jack Ma faces according to this book, which I think is also something that lots of startup entrepreneurs struggle with, is people management. So now we read in page 119. When building up his team, Jack preferred hiring people a notch or two below the top performers in their school. Now, I kind of like to do that as well. The college elite, Jack explained, would easily get frustrated when they encountered the difficulties of the real world. Now, getting the right people to build your company in the beginning is really tough because your company is small. And when you do hire top talent, they do come in with the mindset that they're a bit entitled sometimes. And it's really difficult. From the outset, Alibaba had been driven by a Silicon Valley style work ethic with every employee issued share options in the company vesting over a four-year period. Now, this is still something that happens quite often. Share options are issued that vest over a four-year period with perhaps a one-year cliff or a two-year cliff. But that was still a rarity in China where the traditional setup in private companies was an emperor-like boss who treated employees as disposable and salaries as discretionary. And then we go to the final leg of this video when SoftBank invests, and which is probably one of my favorite chapters as well. So a lot of us know that SoftBank is run by Masayoshi Sun. And let's read page one to four. Masayoshi Sun, known to his friends as Masa, shares some similarities with Jack. Both are short in stature and known for their outsized ambitions, just like me. Sun was asked what it was that prompted him to bet on Jack back in 2000. He says, it was the look in his eye, it was an animal smell. It was the same when we invested in Yahoo, when they were only five to six people. I invested based on my sense of smell. 
Now, I don't know how to define that, but there's a hunger in startup entrepreneurs that really want to succeed. It's driven by a chip of their shoulder, something that happened before, but that is a common trait that I see. And how did the negotiations occur with SoftBank? Masa is Masa, the book reads. He has ADD. I'm not sure what ADD, but a lot of people do, and cannot sit still. He just wants to give you money now, now, commented a former business associate. Joe, who had met up with Sopeng China before the trip, told me details of their meeting. Goldman and the other funds had just invested $5 million for half of the company, valuing Alibaba at $10 million. Now, that's probably a quite a low valuation these days. Masa opened the negotiations by offering $20 million for 40% of the company. This valued Alibaba at $50 million post-money and $30 million pre-money. Now, a lot of startup founders also ask me, what does pre-money and post-money mean? Well, pre-money valuation is the value that that they assign to the company before the investment goes through. And then post money is basically in short, pre-money plus investment from that round equals post money. But in just weeks, Goldman's investment had an increase in value by three times. Joe and Jack looked at each other, Joe recalled thinking, woohoo, that's three times. But then we thought, we didn't want to give up too much equity. That's smart. So Jack said, Masa, that doesn't work for us. Masa had a calculator. He was literally doing the math right there. But Masa wanted 40%, so he said, how about double the amount? I put 40 million for 40%, and that means 60 million pre-money. Now, this is a trend that I see really often. You would see that in the short span of a few, perhaps days, the company's pre-money valuation essentially tripled and then doubled on top of the triple, so i.e. drawn by six times. Jack and Joe offered to think it over. Upon their return to China, Jack wrote Sun an email turning down the 40 million investment. Instead, he offered to take in 20 million for 30%, adding, if you agree, we will go ahead. If not, that's it. Whoa, <laughs> ballsy. Jack later explained why he turned down the larger amount. Why would I need to take so much money? I didn't know how to use it, and there would definitely be problems. Jack didn't have to wait long for his reply from Sun, remember he has a little of ADD, which came in the form of two words. Go ahead. We hope you enjoy our storytelling session of Alibaba, the house that Jack Ma built. And we hope to be covering your story soon. If you like this video, remember to like, share, and subscribe below. And if you'd like us to review any other books, feel free to drop us a DM. Have a lovely day ahead and see you soon. Bye!